Chapter Summary of Supraventricular Tachycardias, SVTs. Overview. SVTs encompass a group of tachyarrhythmias originating above the ventricles, involving the atria or AV node. They are characterized by a rapid and regular heart rate, typically with a narrow QRS complex on ECG. Types and etiologies. 1. Atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia, AVNRT, most common SVT involving reentry within the AV node due to dual conduction pathways. 2. Atrioventricular reciprocating tachycardia AVRT involves an accessory pathway outside the AV node, like in Wolf-Parkinson-White WPW syndrome. 3. Focal atrial tachycardia t arises from a single ectopic focus in the atria. 4. Multifocal atrial tachycardia, multiple ectopic atrial sites driving the heart rhythm, often associated with severe pulmonary disease. 5. Junctional tachycardia, originates from the AV junction, typically due to enhanced automaticity. Clinical features. Symptoms include palpitations, dizziness, dyspnea, chest pain, and potential syncope. The onset and cessation of SVTs are usually abrupt, distinguishing them from sinus tachycardia. Diagnostics. Initial test. 12-lead ECG during tachycardia episodes to evaluate rhythm and QRS morphology. Continuous monitoring. Holter monitor or event recorder for intermittent symptoms. Invasive studies, electrophysiological studies, EPS, for definitive diagnosis and therapeutic planning in selected cases. Management, acute unstable SVT, immediate synchronized cardioversion, acute stable SVT, vagal maneuvers as the first step, followed by pharmacologic interventions, e.g. adenosine for AVNRT, AVRT, if unsuccessful. Chronic management, depends on the type of SVT and may include antiarrhythmic drugs or curative catheter ablation, especially for symptomatic, recurrent SVTs, or those associated with pre-excitation syndromes like WPW. Special considerations. WW syndrome, presence of an accessory pathway, bundle of Kent, leading to pre-excitation patterns on ECG and risk of rapid conduction of atrial fibrillation to the ventricles, which can be life-threatening. Key points. SVTs are a significant cause of palpitations and can range from benign to life-threatening, requiring a tailored approach to diagnosis and management. Recognition of specific ECG patterns and understanding the underlying pathophysiology are crucial for effective treatment. Catheter ablation offers a potential cure for many types of SVT and should be considered in recurrent or drug refractory cases. Clinical case, atrioventricular nodal reentrant tachycardia, AVNRT. Patient information, age, 32 years, gender, female. Presenting complaint, sudden onset of palpitations and mild shortness of breath while at rest. History of present illness. The patient reports that while sitting and reading, she suddenly felt her heart racing, accompanied by a feeling of breathlessness. Denies chest pain, dizziness, or syncope no precipitating factors identified. This is the third such episode in the past six months. Previous episodes self-resolved within 10 to 30 minutes. Medical history, no significant past medical history, denies regular medications, drug allergies, or substance use. Family history, non-contributory with no known cardiac diseases in the family. Physical examination, general appearance, anxious due to palpitations, but no acute distress, vital signs, BP 120 80 mm her gram, HR 170 temp 36.7 Dries 9080 men, RR 18 men. Cardiovascular, rapid, regular heart rate, no murmurs, rubs, or gallops. Respiratory, clear to auscultation bilaterally, no wheezes, rails, or raunchy. Neurological, alert and oriented, no focal deficits. Diagnostic tests. ECG, upon presentation, shows a narrow QRS complex tachycardia at a rate of 170 BPM. P waves are not discernible. Initial management, the patient performed a Valsalva maneuver under observation, which terminated the tachycardia, returning the heart rate to a normal sinus rhythm of 72 BPM. Further diagnostics, ECG post-conversion, normal sinus rhythm, no evidence of pre-excitation or ischemia, Holter monitor, worn for 48 hours, captured one brief episode of similar tachycardia, self-resolved. Diagnosis, Given the clinical presentation, ECG findings, and response to the Valsalva maneuver, a diagnosis of AVNRT is made. Management plan. One, patient education. Explain the nature of AVNRT, triggers, and vagal maneuvers as first-line response. Two, lifestyle modification. 
advised on stress management and avoidance of caffeine and alcohol. Three, pharmacological. Given the infrequency of episodes, a decision was made to avoid daily medication, but to have a pill-in-the-pocket approach with a beta blocker to use in case of an episode lasting more than a few minutes. Four, follow-up. Scheduled for a follow-up visit in three months or sooner if episodes increase in frequency or severity. Discuss the possibility of electrophysiological study, EPS, and catheter ablation if episodes become more frequent or symptomatic. Discussion points. Patient questions. Addressed patients' concerns about the risk of more serious heart conditions and the possibility of future pregnancy. Long-term management. Discussed indications for and potential benefits of catheter ablation if medical management becomes ineffective or undesired. Summary of ventricular tachycardia. Definition, ventricular tachycardia, a rapid heart rhythm originating from the ventricles, characterized by three or more consecutive wide QRS complexes at a rate exceeding 100 beats per minute. Etiology, cardiac causes, myocardial infarction scarring, non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, inherited arrhythmia syndromes, e.g. long QT syndrome, Brugada syndrome. Extracardiac causes, drug-induced QT prolongation, electrolyte imbalances, e.g. hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia. Pathophysiology, predominantly involves increased automaticity or reentry circuits within the ventricles, leading to asynchronous atrial and ventricular beats and reduced cardiac output. Clinical features, symptoms include palpitations, dyspnea, dizziness, hypotension, and syncope, reflecting decreased cardiac output and potential hemodynamic instability. Diagnostic ECG findings, wide QRS complexes, 120 millisecas, rapid ventricular rate, 100 minute, and signs of AV dissociation. Monomorphic VT, uniform QRS complexes, and polymorphic VT, variable QRS morphology, with torsades to points being a specific form of polymorphic VT associated with a prolonged QT interval. Management, acute VT, Immediate management may require cardioversion or defibrillation in hemodynamically unstable patients and antiarrhythmic drugs in stable cases. Long-term management. Options include antiarrhythmic medication, automated implantable cardioverter defibrillator, AICD insertion, and catheter ablation for recurrent VT. Torsades to points, TDP, a variant of polymorphic VT occurring in the context of prolonged QT intervals, treated acutely with intravenous magnesium sulfate, and correction of the underlying cause. Complications, VT can lead to severe hemodynamic compromise and sudden cardiac death if not promptly and effectively managed. This summary encapsulates the key aspects of ventricular tachycardia, including its etiology, clinical presentation, diagnostic criteria, and management strategies, highlighting the importance of timely intervention to prevent serious complications. Clinical case, ventricular tachycardia, V, patient information, age, 58 years, gender, male, presenting complaint, sudden onset of palpitations, and lightheadedness. History of present illness. The patient reports that while gardening, he suddenly felt his heart racing followed by a feeling of lightheadedness. He denies any chest pain, shortness of breath, or syncope. No previous similar episodes. Medical history. History of myocardial infarction, two years ago, managed with percutaneous coronary intervention, PCI, to the left anterior descending artery. Hypertension controlled with medication. No diabetes mellitus or other significant medical conditions. Family history. Father had a history of coronary artery disease. Physical examination. General appearance, anxious due to palpitations. Vital signs, BP 160 mm Hergegrang, HR 180 BPM, temp 37.098.6120 min. Cardiovascular, rapid and regular heart rate, no murmurs, rubs, or gallops heard. Respiratory, clear to auscultation bilaterally. Neurological, alert and oriented, no focal neurological deficits. Diagnostic tests shows wide QRS complexes at a rate of 180 BPM with AV dissociation consistent with VT. Blood tests, mildly elevated troponins, electrolytes within normal limits. Initial management, given the patient's hemodynamic stability but the presence of symptoms, IV amiodarone was administered, 
successfully converting the VT to normal sinus rhythm. Further management and evaluation. Echocardiogram revealed reduced left ventricular ejection fraction of 40%. Cardiology consultation recommended for further assessment and management, including consideration for an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, ICD, given the history of VT and reduced LVEF. Medication review, adjustment of heart failure and arrhythmic medications, including beta blockers and ACE inhibitors. Hospital course, the patient remained stable throughout the hospital stay with no recurrence of VT. He underwent successful ICD implantation for secondary prevention of sudden cardiac death and was discharged with close cardiology follow-up. Discussion points. Patient education. Importance of recognizing symptoms of VT, lifestyle modifications, medication adherence, and follow-up appointments. Long-term management. Discussion on the role of ICD in preventing sudden cardiac death and the need for regular device checks. Risk factor modification. Emphasis on the control of cardiovascular risk factors to prevent further cardiac events. Summary of atrial fibrillation, AFib. Definition, atrial fibrillation, a supraventricular tachyarrhythmia characterized by uncoordinated atrial activation and an irregularly irregular ventricular response. Etiology, cardiovascular risk factor include hypertension, coronary artery disease, valvular heart disease, and congestive heart failure. Non-cardiac disorders such as hyperthyroidism, pulmonary diseases, and electrolyte imbalances. Intrinsic cardiac disorders, including cardiomyopathies, pericarditis, and atrial myxoma. Pathophysiology. A fib involves bursts of electrical activity typically originating from the pulmonary veins or diseased atrial tissue, leading to ineffective atrial contraction, blood stasis, and an increased risk of thromboembolism. Clinical features. Patients may be asymptomatic or present with palpitations, lightheadedness, dyspnea, and an irregularly irregular pulse. Diagnostics, ECG, absent P waves with irregular RR intervals and narrow QRS complexes unless aberrant conduction is present. Echocardiography, used to assess for structural heart disease and atrial thrombi. Management, stable patients, focus on risk factor modification, rate or rhythm control, and anticoagulation based on thrombotic risk. Rate control, beta blockers or non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers as first-line therapy. Rhythm control may involve electrical cardioversion, antiarrhythmic drugs, or catheter ablation. Anticoagulation, decided by assessing the balance between thrombotic and bleeding risks, usually guided by the CH2TS score. Hashtar atrial flutter, similar to AFib in terms of etiology and risk factors, but usually presents with a more organized reentrant atrial rhythm, leading to a characteristic sawtooth pattern on ECG. Management parallels that of AFib with catheter ablation often being more effective for rhythm control. This summary provides an overview of atrial fibrillation, highlighting its causes, clinical manifestations, diagnostic approach, and management strategies, including considerations for atrial flutter. Clinical case, atrial fibrillation, patient information, Age, 65 years, gender, presenting complaint, palpitations and intermittent shortness of breath for the past 24 hours. History of present illness. The patient describes sudden onset of palpitations that started yesterday morning, accompanied by episodes of shortness of breath, especially with exertion. He also reports a feeling of fatigue and mild lightheadedness, denies chest pain, syncope, or leg swelling. Medical history, hypertension, controlled with lisinopril, type 2 diabetes mellitus, managed with metformin, no prior history of heart disease or arrhythmias, family history, father had coronary artery disease, social history, non-smoker, occasional alcohol consumption, physical examination, general appearance, alert, slightly anxious due to palpitations, vital signs, BP 145 90 grangs, HR irregularly irregular at 110 BPM, temp 36.8 degrees Fahrenheit, RR 16 min. Cardiovascular, irregularly irregular rhythm with no murmurs, rubs, or gallops. Respiratory, clear to auscultation bilaterally. 
extremities, no peripheral edema or signs of deep vein thrombosis. Diagnostic tests, ECG shows atrial fibrillation with a ventricular rate of 110 BPM and no evidence of acute ischemia. Echocardiography reveals normal left ventricular ejection fraction, no significant valvular abnormalities and no signs of left atrial thrombus. Blood tests within normal limits, except for slightly elevated blood glucose. Initial management. Given the patient's stable hemodynamic status, rate control was initiated with oral beta blockers. He was also started on oral anticoagulation after assessing his stroke risk using the CA2DS2 VAS score. Follow-up and long-term management. The patient was advised to follow up in the outpatient clinic for further evaluation and management including the consideration of rhythm control strategies if symptomatic AFib persists. Lifestyle modifications were recommended, including weight management, diabetes control, and hypertension management. The need for continuous anticoagulation was discussed with the patient, emphasizing the importance of adherence to prevent stroke. Discussion points. Anticoagulation decision. The rationale behind choosing anticoagulation therapy based on the patient's risk factors and CHA2-2 VASC score. Rate versus rhythm control. Discussion on the benefits and risks associated with rate control versus rhythm control strategies in the management of AFib. Lifestyle modifications. The role of lifestyle changes in the management of AFib and associated cardiovascular risk factors. Summary of Bundle Branch Blocks, BBBs. Overview. Bundle branch blocks are conduction abnormalities in the heart's electrical system, affecting the right or left bundle branches. These branches carry impulses to the ventricles, and a block can delay or obstruct this conduction. Types and etiology. 1. Left bundle branch block, LBBB. ECG findings. Absence of R wave in V1, deep S waves, wide and notched R waves in I, AVL, V5, V6, and loss of Q waves in lateral leads. Pathophysiology. Impulse transmission is delayed, leading to slower myocyte to myocyte ventricular depolarization. Etiology. Often associated with cardiac conditions like coronary artery disease, hypertension, cardiomyopathies, and myocarditis. 2. Right bundle branch block, RBBB, ECG findings, characteristic rabbit ears or M-shaped R-wave in V1, V2, and wide S-wave in leads I, V5, V6. Pathophysiology, similar delayed conduction affecting the right ventricle. Etiology, can be a normal variant or related to cardiac and pulmonary conditions, including coronary artery disease, pulmonary hypertension, and congenital heart defects. 3. Bifascicular block. ECG findings may be combined with left anterior or posterior fascicular block, evidenced by axis deviations and specific QRS patterns. Etiology, often linked to underlying heart diseases such as coronary artery disease and cardiomyopathies. Diagnosis. ECG, the primary tool for diagnosing BBB showing specific QRS complex patterns, T-wave inversions, and axis deviations. Clinical assessment important to correlate ECG findings with symptoms and clinical history. Further testing may include echocardiography to evaluate structural heart disease and exercise stress testing to assess the significance of the block. Management. Acute LBBB, new onset LBBB with concurrent angina should be managed as acute coronary syndrome ACS with immediate evaluation and intervention. Stable BBB, generally does not require specific treatment unless associated with underlying conditions like heart failure or ACS. Medications. Specific drugs depend on the underlying condition. Beta blockers for rate control in AFib or heart failure management, ACE inhibitors or ARBs for heart failure, and antiarrhythmics for associated arrhythmias. Device therapy. Pacemaker implantation may be indicated in symptomatic patients with BBB and significant bradycardia or advanced AV block. ICD, implantable cardioverter defibrillator, may be recommended for those with LBBB and heart failure at risk of sudden cardiac death. Follow-up. Regular monitoring and management of underlying cardiac conditions are crucial. Lifestyle modifications and control of cardiovascular risk factors are recommended to prevent disease progression. Key points. BBB on its own, especially RBBB, can be a benign finding in some individuals without underlying heart disease.
LBBB is more likely to be associated with significant underlying heart disease and may warrant a more comprehensive evaluation. The management of BBB focuses on treating the underlying cause and monitoring for the development of any complications such as heart failure or arrhythmias. Clinical case, left bundle branch block, LBBB. Patient information, age, 68 years, gender female, presenting complaint, shortness of breath and intermittent chest discomfort for the past two weeks. History of present illness. The patient describes episodes of shortness of breath, especially with exertion and occasional mild chest discomfort that is not related to exertion. She also mentions feeling fatigued more easily than usual. Medical history, hypertension, controlled with amlodipine, type two diabetes mellitus, managed with metformin and dietary measures. No previous history of heart disease or arrhythmias. Family history, father had a history of coronary artery disease and myocardial infarction. Social history, non-smoker, occasional alcohol use. Physical examination, general appearance, mildly distressed due to dyspnea. Vital signs, BP 145, 85 millimeter, HR 78 BPM, irregular, temp 36.79 min. Cardiovascular, irregular heart rhythm, no murmurs, rubs, or gallops detected. Respiratory bibicellar crackles, no wheezes. Extremities, no peripheral edema. Check diagnostic tests. ECG shows evidence of LBBB with wide QRS complexes, absent R wave in V1, and broad notched R waves in lateral leads. Echocardiography reveals mild left ventricular hypertrophy and preserved ejection fraction. Blood tests elevated NT-proBNP, normal troponins, and electrolytes within normal limits. Initial management. The patient was admitted for further evaluation of new-onset LBBB and heart failure symptoms. She was started on diuretics for congestion relief. Further management and evaluation. Cardiology consultation recommended for detailed evaluation, including possible coronary angiography to rule out ischemic heart disease as an underlying cause for LBBB and heart failure symptoms. Medication review, optimization of heart failure therapy, including ACE inhibitors and beta blockers, adjustment of antihypertensive therapy. Hospital course, coronary angiography revealed significant coronary artery disease requiring PCI to the left anterior descending artery. The patient's heart failure management was optimized and she was counseled on lifestyle modifications and diabetes control. Follow-up. Scheduled for outpatient follow-up in the heart failure clinic for medication, titration, and monitoring. Enrollment in a cardiac rehabilitation program to improve functional status and quality of life. Discussion points. Significance of new-onset LBBB. The implications of new-onset LBBB in the context of heart failure and potential ischemic heart disease. Management strategies. The role of coronary revascularization and optimal medical therapy in managing patients with LBBB, heart failure, and coronary artery disease. Long-term care, the importance of comprehensive management including lifestyle changes, medication adherence, and regular monitoring to prevent heart failure exacerbations.